G'day YouTubers and thank you for tuning in to today's What's Up Toy View and mind you I've just turned on the light though because i got a funny feeling it's been quite dark though because of the rain that we had though in fact it's been quite cloudy as well and um, just to let you know um, yesterday and Friday and Thursday I didn't do any toy views though because well I was looking forward to see some thunderstorms on those days but unfortunately no 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 they didn't actually occur uh, but anyways in this video um, this video actually took way many times to be produced there eh? because there was a, quite a few interruptions there eh? one for the fact that uh, my camera recorded that audio and two there was also someone popping out who was actually bringing medication so uh, I do apologize for that one eh? but anyways um, luckily enough it's actually a lot more worthy to bring out I think it's very necessary to have medications there eh, I suppose maybe not uh, teachers a bit wet though eh? uh, but anyways um, I'm just going to show you uh, one of the first of that toys there eh? and Actually, for that, look at that. We've got Trackmaster Luke running like new. Look at that. We've got a wow. This is amazing. We've got Trackmaster Luke running with a very brand new, fresh battery. Look at that. He's running like new. But anyways, uh, the first of that toy I'm going to actually be taking a look at is this bloody toy here, Flip Flop Origami Ponies. And uh, this toy here costs about 15 pounds. It's got flush size quick picnic top pack. Why in the bloody hell would I actually review for that pony toys though? It's so, so weird. Like, I mean, you know what? It feels like I haven't been doing many of these toys though, and uh, boy, boy, they are starting to be become a bit of a frequency, a bit of a minor frequency, I suppose, but they are, well, obviously, they're not really that um, very frequent, these toys. I wish they would. They would be frequent, I suppose. Um, but anyways, I'm just going to unpack here because there's actually something very peculiar about this toy. And in fact, as I'm being very considerate to Luke, the narrow gauge engine, obviously, uh, I'm just going to unpack here and straightforward showcase of what we've got. So it's a little bit like a picnic set. Of course, we've got Fluttershy here. Okay, so let's have a good examination of Fluttershy. Just because it's a vlogger's video doesn't exactly mean I don't have to do vlogs. There you go. And look, it's a bit of a different taste to what we have. And it looks like I've got a very nice looking tail. There's Trackmaster Luke whizzing by with his freight train. Cargo train, we're going to call it. A eh? goods train, we're going to call it, I suppose. He's running like new. Uh, but anyways, we've got the butterfly cutie marks. Three butterflies. Maybe the reason why he sh she's shy though. Oh, looks like I've got a bit of detailing missing now. Eh? And I think what's actually missing is the um, the other butterfly wings. Uh, looks like that butterfly missing his wings, I suppose. Maybe I need to detail that one. To make it a bit more right as rain. See if that detailing has been fixed there, the error. Wemo, there you go. More better, I suppose, eh? But there's actually a very some. Um, Quite peculiar with Fluttershy though. Quite interestingly. Now look at the the way she's posing though. She looks like she's sitting or relaxing by the beach, I suppose, eh? Or relaxing while having a picnic. Because this is a bit of a picnic theme, I suppose. She, or maybe she's gliding through well, through the air though, or flying through the air. That's what her pose should be looking like, I suppose. Interesting, isn't it, eh? Very interesting. And um we've also got this big black bear looks like an American black bear, I suppose, eh? Not a grizzly. Uh, we've got a yellow muzzle, we've got a pair of yellow eyes, obviously. That's what it's meant to be. And this was one other flip up pony thing toy that I think has been quite requested for, um, for my brain, I suppose, eh? Looks quite nice. And uh, it actually doesn't look too bad, that term um, bear. What we've also got is a little picnic table. Sorry about the one, eh, bear? That nearly barely it, yeah. <laughs> and that's actually a bit of a top away. And I've also got this um, spinning top, which is actually in the. Well, look at that. It's a bit of a checkered theme, but it's supposed to be a picnic mat. Well, what you can do is spin like this. Oh, that would cause a bit of chaos, eh? Cause a bit of picnic chaos, eh? In Ponyville, I suppose. And there's also another way you can actually spin. You can actually throw it while spinning. Well, I suppose, eh? Looks quite nice. It's a little bit like those um, Legend and Jago um, spinners. Wow, fancy that, eh? Although it doesn't spin that quite well, I would have preferred if it was spinning through wood or any other surface. Wow, that is pretty perfect. I'll show you again. Well, almost. 
Right. Anyways, we've got some toast. Or should I say bread to look at next? Uh, I suppose this one here is marmalade toast or bread because it's picnic because you don't because the very simple rule is, is that you don't often put toasters in picnics because if you do that's going to electrocute you or pretty much catch fire uh, but anyway it looks quite nice with the bread like so and we've also got a blackberry one which is coloured in purple obviously that's what blackberry um, juice would pretty much be like though or blackberry jam would be like I suppose if you put in your toast or bread maybe it's a bit of a theme though maybe Fluttershy has got like a kitchen I suppose and where she can um, cook her food, I suppose, eh? And I also got, oh, look at that. Can even make the bear hold his toast. Maybe not, eh? Maybe his marmalade toast. Maybe he'll be the next Paddington bear, I'm sure. Look at that. Look at that. It looks like a pizza bag, but no, it's just a piece of toast. Looks quite nice. You can actually use the bread for the bear to balance with. Oh, <laughs> barely. <laughs> Get it? That's a bit of a pun, eh? Uh, there's no loss of the info on that bear toy, eh? But strangely enough, Fluttershy's got a name. There you go. Right on her booty. How weird is that? Uh, apart from Fluttershy and the bear, we've also got some plates. We've got a pink one and a white one, also known as sauces. And I believe they're made from the same base as that picnic mat, because you can actually spin them as well. But I'm not going to... Uh, because of the fact that they just, well, almost look like they don't. Well, they don't look like they're spinny. Well, they don't actually spin there, but these are supposed to be plates. Or saucers, it's quite weird, eh? And we've also got some carrots here as well. Uh, obviously that's a great source of food for um, rabbits, though, but that's a very stereotypical sort of food for um, rabbits, though. You can see there's none on the underside, but it looks pretty visible, I suppose. And then we've got Angel Bunny, who I presume is Fluttershy's pet rabbit. Looks quite cute, obviously, eh? I love the, the way that um, he's designed, I suppose. Looks quite nice. I love the pink nose. And the whiskers as well, even though he doesn't look that very similar to the Angel Bunny that you saw at the Milo Pony TV show. Um, the actual design of it, though. But uh, nevertheless, looks quite cool. Especially with the artwork, I suppose. And we've also got... I think the other little critters we've also got there is a ferret, which obviously looks like a cat, obviously. Starting with the grey brown colourisation. In fact, I did make a ferret before though. Um, it was in a video where I showcased a lot of my paper models, I suppose. It wasn't. Oh, there you go. It's got a pink nose. Oh, wait. It's got, it's got like a moustache in its mouth. Or is it something else? It makes you think of Mario or Wario. That's weird. Strange, it could be, it looks like it's got a black mouth there. Maybe you might be smiling with a black mouth. I can't tell. And we've also got a squirrel and a duck. Strange, you never also got these two critters here, eh? Oh, wow. Hello. Oh, <laughs> sorry, squirrel. That was a bit nutty of me. That was a very nutty idea. <laughs> well, a lot of puns today, though. Because we've got this pony thing product. Uh, yes, that looks like, just looks like a very... Wiggle a mallard duck with no extra detailings on it though. And a squirrel. Uh, it looks like they're pretty cheap and cheerful, but um, that's what these toys are for though. That's pretty nice. I think the best way to illustrate this is that I would pretty much set up my picnic mat though and put your saucers or plates here. And if the animals were going to have a bit of picnic and fun, well, guess what? Here's a bit of chaos to create though. You're not going to have toast in it, but you can actually spin it like so. <laughs> okay, I'm done with this dumb pony themed toy product. In fact, there's actually um, more of them, I suppose. Might play with that toy sometime again. Maybe after doing this toy view. But uh, nevertheless, it looks actually um, quite cool, I suppose. And I'm going to put those toys away anyway. And we'll go back to our normal vlogging stance. As always, as I always do in August, day. Eh? Right, okay, camera's facing here. Here we are, back to where I am. And I'm just gonna sit oh, where I am, I suppose, eh? Well, here I am, pretty much sitting as I am, and my skin is chronically dry. 
which is not really a good thing because my skin is starting to crack. I feel like, um, well, your skin's an organ. I don't know how much cream I'm adding there, but I believe it's best not to put too much of it there. That's very interesting, I suppose. Quite a good piece of artwork there, even with the um, squirrel on this um, section here next to the COVID-19 virus. Coronavirus here, court, eh? Well, picnics can be fun, but it's not fun when you've actually got seagulls! Alright, it's a flat of origami, flappy birds, kelp girls, separate family, uh, fishing out to open ocean, frenzy, 12 pack. I love the, the name of the packaging now, I love the way that they named it with the number 2 instead of the word 2, T O. Cost about £12.95. There's the back of the packaging now of a seagull doing an angry stance or a long call. Pretty much doing what it looks like to be. Uh, a core that pretty much signifies its own boundaries, I suppose, or its territory, or maybe it's marking its own territory or making a scent while calling. Oh, so I'm just touching my face because I've got a lot of issues around me, and I also have to do a wink because I feel like there's some issues around me. Wink! <laughs> but you know what? It's actually quite funny having winks, I suppose. And I actually love the artwork as well, though. The artwork of the cup girl. Oh, sorry, I've just banged on the. Table here, that was a bit of an accident, eh? <laughs> that wasn't very enthusiastic of me, no. But, anyways, uh, the artwork of the cup girl, it looks like I love the stance, it looks like he's flying or soaring up in the sky, waiting for some sardine delicacy. Yet, the sardines look like wishy washy from Pokemon. I don't understand why this happens again. Uh, but, nevertheless, I love the artwork and the, the actual design of this toy. Uh, boy, boy. This is um, pretty amazing. Let's see what, we, what we've got there, eh? And uh, the back of the packaging is, well, obviously it's a bit hard to read there, but there's so much artwork here. There we've got some fish and we've got some prawns. So let me just start off with the seagulls first. We've got the breeding white kelp gulls, which are literally simply known as kelp gulls. In fact, they look very similar to um, lesser blackback gulls. But um, to describe these guys, they actually have um, a very huge similarity to um, great blackback gulls with their um, wings like that. But they've got like the wings, well, the, the feet of a lesser blackback gull. That's the one way to describe them. They look like miniature great blackback gulls. Maybe they're not. Maybe they're a bit more, well, smaller in size, I suppose, than um, great blackback gulls. Uh, in the northern hemisphere, but these guys are mainly restricted to the southern hemisphere. There you go. This is quite nice, I suppose. And this is a wintering one because it's got a brown streaking pattern on its head. Fancy that. And uh, we've also got the other one here as well, too. In fact, we've got two of each day. I mean, I could just flap these guys forever and ever. There you go. Uh, it is there, that's what it says there, wintering cup girl. This is pretty nice though. And uh, we've also got, I believe these are their first winter cup girls. I'm actually sort of thinking they're almost kind of like the lesser blackback girls of, um, of the southern hemisphere there, even though um, there were some vagrant lesser blackback girls uh, which arrived as vagrant species there, I suppose. And I believe lesser blackback girls must have entered as a vagrant species uh, in Southeast Asia. I tend to think vagrant species tend to occur when um, a species is not always at present all the time, but very occasional. I suppose so. I've got itchies on my body as well. Boy, it's a nightmare when you've got itchies whenever you're making toy bees and stuff like that, I suppose. And strangely enough, the thing that was also bugging me, <laughs> a bit of a bug thing this time as I'm looking at, at some fish and stuff, um, I actually had a spider, a daddy long leg spider, at my bedroom ceiling there, and uh, my god, and luckily enough I did free that one out with a fly swatter. But anyways, let's talk of aquatics, I suppose, not the sport I'm talking about. Right? Uh, we've got a prawn here, I believe it's a tiger prawn, because it's got brown stripes and a yellow body, I suppose. Doesn't look too bad, and I've actually got three of these there in their own poses. I'll drop the one here first. I suppose we've got these ones here. I think the best thing about these guys is that you can actually um, pose them like so. You can actually um, make them into different stances. It's quite a very um, nicely sized toy. 
Uh, yeah, that looks quite nice. Maybe a seahorse could be um next creature that I can easily pose with, which is quite good. And then we've got some freaking fishies because what's good about fishies that look like wishy washy? Not so much, but pretty much part of the deal. And I believe wishy washy is supposed to be based on the Pacific sardine, which is um, a sardine species that spans through the Indo Pacific. But I might be totally wrong. Maybe only confined to the Pacific Ocean. Although well, I might be totally wrong. Actually, this face looks a lot more, much more better than what I've actually thought of. And chronically enough, it's actually quite breezy outside. It's a bit of a windy day as well. And strange, you know, with August, and what's been quite notoriously strange is, is that this this August looks like that. I think it's very typical for all Augusts in the UK, for that matter. I tend to think um, August is pretty dry, though, but in fact. Strange enough, although it's a summer month, it's been wetter. In fact, I definitely say uh, August, I suppose, for a month in the UK is going to be more wetter than drier. <laughs> There'll be more wet days than in September. But anyways, we've got another seagull themed product to contend with. It's uh, flip flop over gummy flappy birds, but this time it's a British wildlife collection toy, and it costs about fourteen pounds or nine or fifteen pounds, and it's called the. Second winter herring girl pair and family feeding, um, how'd you say, it? reunion 12 pack. Looks quite nice, doesn't it? Eh? And look at that, we've got a derpy picture of a fish. <laughs> that looks like Stunfisk. Oh, from Pokemon, though. And there's the back of the packaging, where it looks chronically amazing. We've got a picture of a crab on the bottom right corner, and we've also got a herring girl, and we've also got a conga eel swimming as well. Because what we can see is a bit of a very nice detailed piece of information there that talks about what's inside this toy. And chronically enough, I think I've seen so much of all of these types of info in um, just like toys like that. And Trackmaster Luke uh, running next to me is actually I'm running quite nicely though. Um, but anyways, let's take a look at what we've got. In fact, um, trying to assemble what we have. Um, yes, it's, um, I think that's what we have actually, I suppose. I suppose it's actually not too bad whenever I've got everything. Uh, the thing I'm actually looking for is the eel. I wonder where I put the eel though. It must have gone totally missing, eh? Strange. I don't know about you, but I think I must have left that eel. Uh, but anyways, let's just take a look at the herring gals first. Obviously it's a regular one. That flaps like so. And, um, yes, we've got the name very obvious. And we've also got another one of these. But this one here looks like it's missing its name. So very strange. So I'm actually going to write the name Herring Girl on it there. That was quite embarrassing of me, eh? I've actually got other paper pieces trying to take over my space, and it's not very good, isn't it, eh? No. Am I. Well, I didn't expect my camera to fall down! Oh, Crikey's, I didn't expect that gag to happen! Huh? <laughs> well, should have made the fire wheel when I... I uh, didn't expect that to happen, eh, when I didn't realise that happened, eh, but, um... There you go! Herring girl! Are you happy now? <laughs> well, at least so I am. Uh, I've also got this um, first winter herring girl, obviously with that sort of colorization like that pretty awesome mate eh? and if I show you what this one would look like there you go it's a first winter herring girl looking very similar to a juvenile I suppose either first winter or juvenile it doesn't matter if they're the same sort of bird though in terms of their design and whatnot though but man oh man that looks chronically good love that I suppose and we've also got this one here which is of course a second winter herring girl. It's got a colour combination of brown and grey on the top of its wings there. Very very similar to uh, first winter except for the faces here as well. Face has got an eye, which uh, a pair of eyes that look a lot more browner than black or grey. And we've also got a big colour combination of black and pink. Fancy that. Uh, strangely enough I'm actually missing the eel. I don't know where I'd put the eel there. I don't know where it is, but uh, it must be here somewhere. If I must have left it inside the packaging there. I had a look at it though, but I don't see it anywhere. The eel must be totally missing in action. Oh wait, it's it's literally with me! <laughs> Hooray! 
Look at that! I've actually got the eel with me, and strange enough, it was there sitting on me for the oh for the lifetime of making this video. That I have to put everything back. I have to put my headphone back. Put headphones on the table. There you go. Boy, oh boy, I didn't realize that was a bit of a fail when that webcam just. Oh, fuck. But anyways, it's, it is quite nicely designed that conga eel. I'm not sure what its face is, but it certainly looks nicely detailed. Trying to change my hands there because, well, my arm's starting to ache here. Looks quite cool, eh? It's got a very tiny looking face. It's very hard to see from the camera. But, um, yes. Pretty small things indeed. And if I show you the other side here, in its stance like that, that's a bit quite tricky there. Uh, see that? That is a bit tricky whenever you film something quite small, eh? But that is definitely an eel. You've got two of these fishies that look like that. And uh, they're supposed to be mackerel, obviously. Although they're actually looking a lot more white than grey, strangely enough though. Which doesn't really comply or conform um, into the um, realism standards though. But nevertheless, they do have blue and green uh, colour combinations on the top of their fins. And the eyes are yellow as well. And the caudal tail fins are blackish grey obviously, yeah, that looks nice as well as the fins as well anyways, we've got this edible crab which actually doesn't look that edible indeed because the name edible crab is basically a species name I've seen that one all the time, eh? in fact it's just pretty much similar to any other crab that I've actually have made before and we've also got a flatfish which to me looks more like a place in fact the place is a type of flatfish and it does look like Stunfist from Pokemon because look at the spots and look at the overall design. It, the design looks pretty much absurdly um, accurate, obviously, eh? And then we've just got a boring brown card that looks like a piece of turd with a face in the front. Uh, but anyways, looks quite good, actually. I would have preferred it if there was a colour combination of green and brown. It would have been much more nicer, I suppose, eh? But uh, nevertheless, just keep swimming. <laughs> well, at least I didn't make that one slap in the face, but at least it looks quite good indeed. Um, yes, I uh, got a funny feeling that um, uh, Seagull products are now going to be, of course, on the rise again. Strange enough, though. I'm going to grab those um, herring girls next. Strange enough, we're getting more and more of these. Weird, isn't it, eh? Very weird. Okay, moving on along. Speaking of fish. How about some mackerel, which looks like that. And it's a different species of mackerel because it's called the Pacific Blue Slimy Mackerel. Shirling School 12 pack, costs about 15 pounds. And it's not a British Royal Collection toy overall though, because, well, these guys are found in the Pacific Ocean. And I don't know why I'm talking real fast though, but yes, there's not much info on this packaging either at all. Strange enough, apart from the fact that it says, all our A4 size big fish. How weird is that? Anyways, you're going to actually be doing something quite different though. Instead of unpacking very normally though, I'm actually going to unpack in a very different way. And look at this! Oh, it's raining fish! <laughs> well, I definitely say that could be the funniest toy view I've ever created so far though, eh? Uh, at least the fishies, they all look quite similar though. Um, yes, in fact, even though they may look different though, each fish looks pretty much very similar. Well, obviously, you know what, they all look pretty much similar indeed for the fact they've got grey bodies and heads and <laughs> fins luckily that one didn't slap in the face obviously, eh? Um, although they look the same, as I said before though, they've got grey fins grey heads and bodies but their tails, um, oh pardon me I've just burped are yellow, and in fact their eyes are also yellow as well with uh, blue markings on the top here, not as far away as the dorsal fin, I suppose. And strange enough, because I've just ranged the whole uh, flip flap table, uh, the whole table or desk that I'm reviewing there, here is all of the macro though. My goodness me. Maybe I should call this one the whole macro, the holy macro mafia. Crikey, Ronnie, that's a great title name though. If there was a gang of mackerel, I'd pretty much call it the mackerel mafia. <laughs> we have got three more of these, and if I hold another one there, look at that. Can I join you? No. You're not even a mafia member at all. Anyways, 
That's good. I'll stick this toy for you. Um, I have to say, this is getting way beyond hilarious, though. Even though I did so many takes on doing this toy view earlier on, uh, luckily enough, I think this toy view should go ahead uh, in a very nice way, I suppose, eh? Very, very nice way. Not too bad. Not too bad indeed. Um, I have to say, I've actually got about um, six of that products to review, so that's not a bad number. And we've also got this other Sega product here. Flips up all the gummy, Flappy Birds, put it for the collection. Look at that, it costs about £12. And it's called the Herring Girls and Buzzards vs. Bunny Rabbit's 12 pack. Makes sense. And there's the back of the packaging here. With a petrified looking bunny rabbit there. Strangely never looks like these bunny rabbits are pretty much making a bit of a comeback after Easter. That I did there quite a while back, eh? And we've got some common buzzards, and they look very similar to the other buzzard product that I did there before. Uh, sadly, uh, it looks like the um, buzzard with the carrion crows in it there uh, actually lost its packaging. Uh, which is a bit sad though, but nevertheless, I'm just going to show you what's inside here. And I've actually got some buzzards to um, compare from the other product I've got today. Strangely enough, which is going to be quite amazing at all times. Here's a look at the herring girls there. They all look pretty much darn similar though, with those. Um, Silvery grey backs and the black wing tips. It's always the same seagull, even though they look well pretty much different. Though, apart from the fact we're just missing a bit of silvery grey details on its body, I suppose. Well, it's a bit of an error, isn't it? Eh? Yes, it was. And silly Ivan didn't even try and do detailings like that, like I did just now. Um, looks way beyond perfect. Way beyond perfect indeed. And we've also got another one of those, eh? And I also want to check on how many bunny rabbits we've got there, because I can just see um, five there, eh? But what if we've got the, the maximum of six? Let's see if there's another bunny rabbit inside here. Uh, maybe it's missing, maybe it's not there. Am um, I missing something? One, two, three, four, five, six. Hooray! So we've got six bunny rabbits! In fact, they look very similar to the bunny rabbit I reviewed there on the flip up pony product. It was called Angel Bunny. Uh, luckily enough though, they actually look pretty similar to the bunny rabbits that I did way back in Easter in 2021. There's quite a good toy view though, uh, in the morning of, of 4th of April, which is about 4 months away though, eh? <laughs> Interesting, isn't it? Wow. Uh, strangely enough, these bunny rabbits, um, they all look quite cute with their pretty much uh, timid looking shocked faces though. Pretty cute. Obviously, they don't look that realistic though, but um, that's what they're meant to be. Normally based on the rabbits that you see on the countryside, or in the woods, or in parks, I suppose, so. Eh? And here are the buzzards, and they look very different to the other buzzards I did though, with their normal looking bird of prey face. They used to look like Pidgeot from Pokemon. If I grab an old buzzard here, yeah, they're actually a lot more darker than this one here. This one is a lot more tad lighter. Uh, in terms of its colouring, uh, in fact, although they look pretty much the same, well, look at that buzzard versus buzzard. Um, look at that. Look at the major differences here. This one here is a lot more brown, a lot more clearly brown than this one here. Also, the faces look uh, pretty much a uh, tad different as well. If I show you then um, closely, look at that. Which one do you prefer? Do you prefer the new one that came with the seagulls and, and rabbits? Or do you prefer the old one that came with the carrion crows? Um, strangely enough, um, I've got a funny feeling I actually prefer these ones now. Uh, because to me, um, it's pretty much on the verge of not copying Pokemon. At least. Uh, which is nice, obviously, I suppose. Uh, it's, I would actually say this is chronically good. Okay, uh, pretty much done. And I've actually got one more for that product to um, do. Actually, hang on a minute! Hang on! I've just lost another mackerel! Oh my goodness me! Holy mackerel! <laughs> Get it, eh? Sorry for the pun, but um... Oh, I'm so sorry. I forgot to pack that little mackerel. Oh, why do I... Oh my goodness me. I don't know why I keep on forgetting, though, about that little poor mackerel. In you go! And um... I think our last product I might take a look at is something quite special, something that I always want to make a nice comeback with. Um, pigeons, I suppose. Uh, specifically, it's called the Tropical Asian Spotted Dove Small Flock 5-Pack. 
Oh wow. It's also a pickup of a gummy flapping bird's toy. I know about that one, but um look at that, look at this. That, that's a very interesting reading here. It says the sands of a spotted dove. Huh? <laughs> or in this case, hoo hoo hoo! I don't know about you, but I should actually play the sound effect of a spotted dove, and if I type it in the computer, I might be able to hear the sounds of a spotted dove. Hopefully I won't play it too loud though. And um Yes, it's going to be quite nice today. Let me just turn off the tone here for a while though. Uh, but let me just show you the back of the packaging first though, because I need to turn off the train when it gets a bit more nearer towards me. And look at this, it says they have red eyes, but they ain't evil. Ooh, pretty realistic those guys, eh? Uh, yep, they're literally based on the, the spotted dove though, these guys. I think it's a tropical Asian species though, and I think these guys have been introduced into um, Southern California, Australia, and New Zealand, and even Hawaii as well, which is pretty amazing. Eh? In fact, this train's coming clearly um, close. Coming clearly um, close though. Clear and close though, I suppose, but let me just go ahead and play the sound here. <coughs> Wow, that's quite a good sound effect. Uh, I'm just going to turn the train back on though. Uh, that sound effect, I actually used to remember listening to that bird sound effect when I was actually on holiday in Malaysia though. Pretty reminiscent whenever you go to countries like, you know, Thailand, Malaysia or Indonesia or maybe Singapore, I suppose they're native from Asia, I suppose they, from the Indian subcontinent to um, Southeast Asia. I suppose these guys are fairly instantly recognisable if I Pull their tails to make their wings flap. Man oh man. We haven't had a pigeon themed product for quite a while though. Oh wow, I could do a bit of a scratch. Good scratch on my nose here because it's itching me. Lovely wing details like that though. Uh, luckily enough, I'm glad to have this fire pack with me though. And boy oh boy, I am so glad. Uh, look at the the um the spotted collar here. Looks very, very nice actually, eh? It looks also pretty accurate to the Real bird. Wow. It feels like we haven't had a pigeon product for like one month in July. It feels like July has been the only month so far where there hasn't actually been any pigeon products. And luckily enough, we've got some. Fancy that. Man, oh man, oh man. This is actually very good. Very, very good. Oh my goodness me. I love the wing tips as well. Big black wing tips. I love it though. This is so good. I love those markings. This is ace. Completely and utterly ace. One of the best toys I've looked at so far today. Along with some of those pony toys and the cigar themed toys as well. Well, I don't know about you, but Quarky or Raleigh, do I actually have to go ahead and just make more flip up toys? Surely I, you know, surely I do have to, um. But, um. My god, that's a lot of flip up toys. Six of these flip up toys I've been reviewing so much today. Well, if you really have been enjoying this video though, please give this video a like, subscribe for more flip up toy views in the future though, and I'm really sorry for being a bit sloppy though, because yes, well, my camera just falling down to the ground. <laughs> and for the fact that my body was constantly itching me as well, and um, I had a spider on the, um, I actually had a spider on the ceiling and then luckily enough I just flushed it away though, not from the toilet but out of the window though, uh, with a fly swatter though, but luckily enough, I hope it's life will be right as rain and safe and sound. So anyways, I hope you really enjoyed this toy view, that's a very weird one, but anyways thank you so much for watching and bye for now!